보자! Hey guys, Tiffany here of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. I'm a full-time costume and prop fabricator as well as educator here on YouTube. And on today's cosplay tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make Saiyan hair, specifically how I did it for my Vegeta cosplay from Dragon Ball, out of EVA foam, hot glue, and fake fur. But before we begin, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and then we can begin! And what you're going to need for making this wig is 2 and 4 millimeter EVA foam, Sharpies, Surebonder glue gun, and specifically their EVA foam hot glue, contact cement glue, lace, faux fur, fabric scissors, a wig comb and brush, hairspray, a wig head, and of course your safety gear, and I'll have links to all of these in the description. And yes, I made a pattern for this as well, and the 2D pattern is available on my website, www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com, or see the link. To first start off, you're going to want to trace letters A through J onto 4 millimeter EVA foam using a Sharpie. And these will all look like banana peels that are laid out. And don't forget to label them as well as put an arrow where I have it based off of the pattern. This way you know which part is the tip. And once that's done, you can cut each of the pieces out using an X-Acto knife. There's also guidelines on these pieces and you'll want to put them onto the back. And then with an X-Acto knife that is extremely sharp, you're going to cut halfway through the EVA foam at a 45 down that line. Then you're going to rotate it and cut it again 45 down that line. And this is going to create a triangle piece that you can then remove. And then all of your pieces will end up being able to bend into that shape. Next is time to glue them together. And we're going to be using Surebonder cosplay sticks. Now this is a specific type of hot glue that Surebonder makes that is designed to really go and attach for EVA foam. Now you can also use contact cement glue, which will give you a much stronger hold, but you don't really need to, so go ahead and hot glue this together. And with the Surebonder hot glue gun, for this to work, you will want to have it on the high temperature specifically for EVA foam. Then just slowly start hot gluing each of the seams working from the tip downward. You'll want to apply hot glue in no more than two to three inches at a time as you're going to need to hold the foam into place for the hot glue to cool and then it will stay in that shape. Don't worry if there's any extra glue globs because we're going to be covering all of this anyway. And in case you haven't worked with hot glue before, it is a little bit hot, so be careful. And once each of the pieces are fully assembled, they will slowly start to look like these little pods, either three-sided or four-sided, and have an open bottom side. In total, you should have 16 of these pieces, but depending on your head size, you may want to make more of them later. Now for the fur! And I got this off of Amazon, and I'll have a link in the description for it. It was the size 30 by 36, and I will note that I used all of it. So if you have a slightly larger head, or if you end up wanting to make more spikes, then you will want to order a little bit more. And you will want to flip your pattern upside down, and on the back of the fur, you're going to trace each of the sides onto this piece. And also, don't forget to label them. And once you've traced all of the pieces onto your fur, you will want to cut them using scissors. Again, do this on the back side and just barely cut through the top surface and this will leave the least amount of fur everywhere. But you're still gonna have a lot of cleanup of the fur because it just goes everywhere. And when laying these pieces down onto your fur, you're going to want to have all of the spikes, the way that the arrows were facing, in the direction that you want the hair to go. So you're gonna want all of the hair fibers to be going upwards. Now to start attaching the fur onto your EVA foam pieces. Again, we're gonna be using Surebonder's glue gun and specific EVA foam glue. And you will want to apply it starting off with one piece at a time at the tip, working in about two inches at a time, applying the hot glue to the EVA foam surface, and then while it is still hot, 
get your fur for that specific side and place it at the tip and push it down firmly. Once that's attached, then you will want to repeat the same process moving your way down to the base of that piece. Then just continue to do this for each of either the three or four sides of that specific spike. When all the sides are covered with the hair, you will notice that you're going to have seams showing. And for this, you're going to want to take your hot glue, apply the glue down the seam, and then push your fingers on either side, pushing the fur into the hot glue, slowly working your way towards the tip of the piece. This will make it where the fur will naturally blend together, you won't see the hot glue, and you won't see the seam. And when that's all done, put it to the side, and then we're gonna work on the cap portion of this. And with the pattern for the cap, trace it onto two millimeter EVA foam, and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. I will note that I have a very small head, so if you have a larger head, you may have to make your own pattern for this cap portion. And it's really easy, just get a wig head or a mannequin styrofoam head that is close to your size, or even have your own head and put saran wrap over it, masking tape, and then you can kind of trace the outline of where your hairline is. And then you can kind of split it apart in the similar shape to get the pattern that you need. And for me, for attaching these pieces, I went with contact cement glue, applying this to all of the edges. And then once both sides were fully dry, slowly attach them together. You can use hot glue for this, but your seams are not gonna look as nice. And this part is what is going to actually be touching your scalp. So it may cause some irritation if it is the hot glue rubbing over time. So just be warned, but you can do it either way. And then just attach one side following from each of the points all the way to the ends. And then do the other side and then attach the two pieces together to make one. Now to start assembling each of your spikes onto the cap section. And this little image right here is very important because each of the pieces will correlate to where they go with this image. And with this, the front would be B, which should be basically over your nose. And then the back would be G and I, which would be around your neck and the back of your head. But you can also place it however you want. You may want to add some more pieces depending on the size of your head as well, and that's totally fine. So with your cap, you're going to want to place it onto your wig head, and then you're gonna grab piece A, which is the very largest centerpiece, and then place it on top roughly where you want it to go and trace where the line is. This is gonna give you a good guess of where you kinda want it to sit. And for me, I have a lot of hair and how I actually wore this wig with having so much hair was I cut out a circle at the very top so that way I could put my hair in a bun and it would actually sit inside of the center large spike. If you don't have hair, then you don't need to do this step. Then you're going to want to attach piece A onto the cap. And again, we're gonna be using Sherbonder's hot glue, applying it to all of the edges of piece A, and then while it is still hot, placing it onto the cap and then firmly pushing down until it cools and will stay in place. Once that's done, you can go around again on the edge, applying hot glue in about two to three inches at a time, and then push the fur into it. So this will hide the seam. Now for making it less fluffy and more hair-like and spiky. And you wanna first start off at the base, combing it with a wig brush upwards to the point. Do this all the way around. This will also help remove any of the fur that was just kinda of sitting there, so don't be alarmed if there's hair coming off. Then use hairspray spraying from the base upwards in the direction that you want the hair to lay, and with your hand, slowly kinda of smooth it out. I will note that I used Big Sexy Hair, which is the brand of hairspray, and not got to be hairspray. The got to be will end up leaving all of the fun fur being more of a white color mist. So just use normal hairspray. And for the spike, just spray a little bit more and then kind of pinch it into the shape that you want. Once your main spike is done, then you can repeat the same process onto all of your smaller tiny spikes.
And here's what a before and after should look like by doing this process. Once that's done, you can then start attaching all of the smaller spikes. Starting with the front one, which is B, and then slowly working your way around either side of the wig, doing the larger outer rim ones. And there will be a few gaps that you'll see the EVA foam, and we'll take care of that after all the pieces are attached, so don't worry. And then filling the rest of the bottom neck part ones. And this is what it should look like so far. Now to fill all of the gaps so you no longer see the EVA foam. And for this, you're gonna be using all of your little scrap pieces, cutting them into, I still did them like triangle-like shapes. And again, you're gonna want the hair going upwards, but apply the hot glue directly to the back of the fur, and then just slowly tap them onto all of the EVA foam. And I highly recommend using either a rat tail comb or a pencil or something to help push the fur to where you want it in all of the cracks, as well as that way you don't burn your fingers. As well as doing this for your side burns, cutting the triangle, placing them down, and using the comb to push it down. You can also use the comb to brush it into the existing wig part, and then just use some hairspray, comb it in gradually, and it will blend right in. And now for the front part, and for this, you're gonna want to get some lace. And I highly recommend getting a lace that is closer to your skin color and not white like mine, cause you do notice it a little bit. But just apply some of your hot glue to the inside of the wig onto the spike section, and then slowly start pushing your lace onto it. You will want to do about a square-like shape, so around a foot, foot and a half and then placing it, having extra on either side, cause we'll just trim it later. And follow the lace all the way to where your ears are going to be. And here's what it should look like when it's done. Next, with a Sharpie, you're going to want to kind of trace where you want your specific Vegeta hairline to be. So this is where you get to determine how much of a forehead you want to show or how much you don't want it to show. And for me, I ended up putting it on and in the mirror, kind of traced with the Sharpie where I wanted the line to be. Be aware that this is lace and that lace has tons of holes. So your Sharpie will go onto your skin. So just be aware. But once you have your shape drawn, then you can start attaching more pieces specifically to the lace section to slowly make the hairline that you want, following the same processes that we mentioned earlier. Then once you're done, you can trim your lace. And I'll note that originally I left a bit of lace to help glue the wig down, but once I actually wore it, I didn't find that I needed the lace at all. So I ended up cutting all of it that was showing. And then the wig was done. And I'm gonna show you how I put this on for conventions. Basically, it just comes off and it's one solid piece. And because I have just a bit of hair, I actually made it so that way there is a spot inside that when my hair is in a bun, it can sit in there and then it holds this on my head. And for putting on the wig, I typically have my hair in a bun and I'll normally have a wig cap on top as well as I'll use hairspray to kind of keep all the flyaways away but I was lazy and didn't want to do it today. All you have to do is pick up the wig, find your front, and then insert on the head, and then slide forward until you have your liking. Mm -hmm. And at this point, if you would want, you can also apply for the lace front to glue down, but I ended up taking it off just because I didn't really need it and I can pretty much shake my head around. It's nice because at conventions I can easily take it on and off, but I 
think it looks really good. And that guys is how I made my Saiyan wig specifically for my Vegeta cosplay from Dragon Ball. I hope you found this video helpful for making your very own one. And if so, let me know in the comments as well as like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, a big thank you to all of my sponsors as well as all of my members here on YouTube, specifically those legendary members who financially help support me so I can continue to do this as my full-time job and make more cosplay tutorials for you. So consider joining and becoming a member. And I will see you for our next cosplay tutorial. Much love, guys!